Hi guys, I'm Rashiella. Today we'll be talking about a recent track I released on a Votra um, with Waf. You may know Waf, he looks like a hairy bloke, he lives, looks like he lives under a bridge. Um, this track was out on a Votra uh, in about February time and it was kind of uh, the first release of the House Listens compilation I did. Um, you might may not know me, I released music or hot creations. Um, Crosstown Rebels, uh, Votra, Viva, quite a few labels have been making music about 15 years and um, yeah I've been DJing and uh, travelling the world on the back of that for about five. Um, so let's go straight to it, here's the track here. Okay first up as you can see it's very pretty, um, yeah I, when you're making music it's always a good idea to kind of organise your track um, just so that when you're dipping in and out which is, which is um, which is good to do, uh, as opposed to just work on one track at a time. Sometimes you'll be going into a new track completely blind and not knowing what the hell's what, and you'll have worked on it about a month ago and not remembered what you're doing. So I have a kind of really kind of geeky colour system which I stick to, so I know where every all bits are which. Um, got the kick up here. I always do my kind of drums the same kind of colour. This the bass is um, sort of bluish, and then the vocals I do red. I mean, obviously it doesn't really matter what you choose, but. Um, but that's kind of colour scheme and all my tracks like this. And yeah, and uh, I know it's a pain in the ass, but again, I name all the ship just so I know where I am. Okay, so first first things first, let's start at the kick. As you can see above the kick, there's this little thing called SC. Now, what's that? Okay, well, SC stands for side chain. Now, a side chain is what is where you're ducking. When I say ducking, you're, you're essentially turning the volume down of the bass to make space for the kick. Why would you do that? Well, basically they both occupy the same frequency range which is the low frequency range of course and when you're having two things occupying the same space in the mix they, it doesn't sound too good and you really want to try to avoid that at all costs now luckily the, the sound of the kick lasts for just a few seconds so some bright guy figured out that you, if you duck the bass just for the duration of the length of the kick you can have both of them in the same frequency range and everything's sound now why have I got a separate uh, channel for, uh, for side chain well that's because here and here and, and also in other tracks you can remove the kick but you want to keep the side chain going because the side chain will be affecting the volume of the bass. Now the problem of affecting the volume of the bass if you remove the side chain you're suddenly going to get an increase in volume which you don't want. So I just have this just a basic it doesn't really I mean you don't need it for the audio content it's just a kick it could be anything it could even be a hat it's not it's just using as a trigger uh, which will be triggering the side chain compressor which is here on the bass. So at every single the top of every single track I have the whole of the top of the track will just be um, the side chain track just for just for the sole purposes of triggering the side chain. Of course it's it's not activated so we don't hear any of the audio content. So let's talk about the kick here we just got a basic sample of the kick playing out of the Ableton sampler. Um, as this track was a collab, I didn't choose this kick, so I'm not exactly sure where it's from, but it's probably just from like an analog sample pack. Let's have a listen to it. Sounds like the filter's on there. Oh, it was. Yeah, it sounds like pretty much a standard 909 kick. And that's been used, triggered via the sample. We've got an auto filter here in the chain. That's to uh, remove the bottom end of the kick for, say, sections of the brakes, so say here. Oh, maybe not there. There. Just using the device on just to kind of remove the bottom end of the uh, of the kick. So pretty boring. That's the kick done. Okay, next up, let's look at the hats and the percussion. All right, we've got a lot going on here. So what what are all these from, and what are they doing? Okay, so the clap. See the clap here is audio. So this, I imagine, is just a clap loop where. The clap is just been used, and these claps have been silenced out. So you can see the the envelope um, within the region. So if we zoom in here, so this is actually three claps here. But I think Waf probably did this. This is the this is just the clap that's been isolated within this loop. Let's listen to it again. Very analog sounding clap, um, no doubt. Either taken from a 
sample pack all recorded in. What else have we got here? Okay, we've got a lot going on. We've got shaker loop, small hat loop, top loop, big shaker, oop, don't know what the hell that is, poms, clavs, snare bit, perk loop, snares and toms, all making up the drums. So let's be isolate the drums and listen to them here. We've got a lot going on. So the way I, make, I use my drums, typically I will use a mixture of loops uh, and a mixture of individual samples. Um, for the loops, um, I usually sort of go through, uh, maybe get a stack of loops together, and then I'll kind of pick and choose certain bits of the loops that I like, um, using the envelope like we just saw on, on the region, and getting rid of the stuff, the bits of the loop I don't like. I imagine that's what's gone on here. Actually, these just seem to be straight up the loops. But in, so, in, so for example, this thing called POMS, I mean, this, if I remember, this is actually just an element from a loop. So if you can hear that now, that's that's what's happened there. It's probably just a single bit I like from a loop. I've cut all the rest out, consolidate it and just loop that. Just to make this kind of little nut, little pommy sound, I don't really know how best to describe it other than that. Again, this again another loop which has probably just been dissected, just have this little bit. So I kind of usually stack all the loops together and just pick and choose the bits I like. Obviously it needs kind of a foundation for the drum loop. Um, so this, for example, this is the loop in Thor. It's called Shake Loop. This will just be a loop of shape shakers. Very quiet. Again, we've got a small hat loop here. This is more your straight up offbeat hat. more shakers. They're all stacked on top of each other, none really kind of the dominant uh, loop there to kind of give a full sounding top end of percussion. So if we play just these pink ones, which are kind of all, I usually use pink for hats. Got a nice deep detailed kind of hat loop. Okay, so what groove has been used in this? Well, this, WAF started this track and we don't happen to have any grooves in the groove pool, so I'm not sure what groove's been used in this track. But normally when I'd use uh, making my drums with my loops, I would use a groove from the machine. The reason I use the machine, it's got a, a lovely little knob, which uh, you can adjust the groove uh, incrementally, and you can, just, you, you can see which one you like, as opposed to um, loading different groove uh, files. And it, each time you do that, it's obviously a bit more cumbersome. This has just got a great, zero to 100% groove dial which you can just basically pick however the swing uh, suits the track you're making. Okay so we've done all the hats, let's see what else we've got down here. These are kind of more percussion elements, so we've got clavs, let's listen to what this little thing is, sound of clav sound. Now let's have a look, we can see here it's just the clav in the sampler, yep we can hear some verb, where's the reverb coming from, right. Let's get the let's get the uh, mix up on here. Okay, so say a little bit about sends and returns. Now these are something which I use all the time when I'm making music. Um, I'll actually have a lot more than these when I'm normally making tracks. Again, because we've started the project, these are ones he's used. So let's see what we've got here. The first, our first send is a reverb here. So this has got this is a long reverb. This is typically use on like say for example drops and, and, and for breaks this is nearly 10 seconds so this is a really long tail um, I've rolled off rolled off the very high ends there um, the next up we've got a delay um, so again just using the simple Ableton delay I've got uh, that on two and six that's almost a ping-pong-ish kind of effect which is, although that's not the actual ping-pong next one auto pan well what's this auto pan what auto pans doing here it's panning the sound, i.e. Um, putting it on the, the, the extremities of, of, of the, uh, the stereo spectrum, but putting them in at different times so, you, so it sounds like you're hearing it. If you obviously had it at the same volume in each speaker, you wouldn't hear the thing, you just hear it in the centre. It's, um, it's alternating them, as you can see it's kind of got like a little sine wave going on here. Um, now, what, what's this then, what's the point? Well, it get, kind of gives certain sounds width. Um, so for example, we have like a, a vocal, for example, um, 
if it sits dead in the centre, then that will sound fair enough. But if you have it a bit of width, it will kind of fill the whole the whole of the um, the whole of the track, if you like. Um, you don't want too much of it, just a kind of just a little bit, just to kind of give the, the sound some width. Ping pong delay again. That's just a just a, just a straight up ping pong delay again. Echo in between the two speakers. Got another reverb here. What's this one for? Okay, I should be able to know from the length of the the, the, the tail. Um, so this is just under a second. So for just under a second, this could be used on drums. You don't want any uh, tails too long on the drums. Um, typically, you'd use like a, a, a plate reverb normally on drums. That's what you can normally use here. It's just just the standard uh, reverb unit for Ableton. So this is a short tail, and the size is quite is again quite small. So I imagine this has been used on the drums. Last stop in our sends and returns, we have a simple delay. Again, this is just your length of a beat delay, a um, little bit of feedback there. So, why are we bringing this up? Well, it's because on this clavs we've got a little bit of auto pan, we've got some of the ping pong delay, and we've got some of the, uh, the short reverb to give it its, give it the sound like that. Okay, next up, got something I've called perk loop. Again, just another loop, as you can hear, it's all kind of um, just, just all kinds of percussion going on there. We can hear a conga in there. Obviously, a clap. Yeah, this is this is actually a very kind of um, recognisable uh, loop within the track. You can really hear that loop within the percussion. So this will just just it's just sitting on straight on top of all these loops. So we have one, two, three, four five full loops all playing together at the same time. A lot of Tech House does that. Um, it really kind of gives like a nice thick top uh, percussion there. Of course, if you're making something much more stripped back, you wouldn't even consider doing that. So on this pert loop, what we've got here, we've got a glue compressor. So what's a compressor? Well, a compressor's basically dealing with the dynamic range of a loop. What does that mean? Okay, well, the dy dynamic range is the difference between all the elements and uh, the range between Say the, the quietest element and the loudest element. So I've got a threshold of about 12.7 and a makeup gain of 4.6 dB. Now, what this is doing, this if we remove this, we can hear all of a sudden some of the sounds within the loop are going to get quieter once I've removed the, uh, the glue compressor. Um, and those elements which are getting quieter are sometimes the elements you want to bring out. So what do you do? You turn down the louder ones, but only the louder ones. How do you do that? Well, what you do, you set the threshold so that it only is triggered uh, for the louder elements. So here, we can see every single time one of the louder sounds within the loop um, is, is sounded, um, you can see the dial move up. Now, that dial is measuring gain reduction. And what that means is every single time, say for example the clap, I think the clap's particularly loud in this, in this loop. Every time the clap is heard, it's going to trigger this, and that's this little compressor here is going to turn it down. And that has the effect of turning all the loud bits down, making everything more of the same volume, which you can then turn it up by using the makeup game. So here, when you have a, like a loop um, like this, this one, all the, the detail, which was in between the loud sounds, has now been, and now been brought up and is now much more of a feature of the loop than before. So that's why I've got the glue compressor on here, is to, uh, to really kind of level it out and bring out the detail in the loop, which I, I particularly like the detail. Okay, next up, snares. So as we can see, these snares, they're not, typically you could have a snare where a clap would be, i.e. the two and the four. Um, in this case, we haven't got that at all. We've just got them kind of giving a little bit of a, just a bit of swing and groove to, the, to this track. We've got them just before the clap, and just after, so if we play it with the clap, we can hear. It's kind of working with the clap. Why is it similar to the clap? Well, they occupy the same kind of range within the, within the sound. They're, they're kind of around that, probably around, I don't know, maybe 2,000, one to, one to 2,000 hertz, I'd say. So yeah, so this is, we've got these in conjunction with the clap. And again, these go throughout the whole track. As you can see, whenever you've got the drums in, these snares are part of the thing. 
So we're nearly done with all our drummy percussion-y sounds. We've just got one little thing I can see here called toms. Now, these toms are clearly not a feature of the track. These are more like a fill. Um, like I said at the start, I kind of keep all similar groups of things uh, together. So fills, so you've got your, your, your um, what do you call them, your falls, your rises, your crashes. These, these are more like fills, they should probably go at the bottom bit. Um, they've sort of found their way into the hat section. Anyway, no matter. So what we've got here, this looks just looks like your standard fill. What's a fill? Well, a fill is the kind of, just like one instance kind of sound which you have leading up to sort of maybe a juncture in the track. So here we've got, let's have a listen to what this sounds like. Yeah, so this is just leading up to a break. This is a kind of like a little drum crescendo before we get there. Um, you can normally buy packs for, for fills. A lot of people do use them, but it's one of my pet hates actually, is people just slapping on fills that they've got from sample packs. Um, so I really like to cr create my own a lot of the time. This one is one I've kind of created. So what is it? It's just your standard tom sound. Um, in, in a drum rack. Now, there's only actually only one tom being used, so the drum rack's actually unnecessary. But um, it's just your, the basic tom with a kind of little with the, the MIDI, simple as that, just giving it a bit of a crescendo towards the break. And it's used about probably three times within the track, once there and once there. Next up, what we've got, we've got the bass now. Now, this is a very important part of, of any track, as you can imagine. The most important part of certainly the music I make, I kind of Housey tech house is, is the groove and you don't have to be a genius to work out the, the bass is an integral part of that groove. So it's in a groove just just maybe just for uh, just to keep things organized but you would potentially put your, your side chain compressor over all your bass channels. Okay all your bass channels what do I mean? Well I've got four here. Bass, bass trans, bass mid and bass mid two. The mid ones are dealing with the mid range of the bass. The trans deals with the transient which I've gone to shortly and then you've got the straight up bass, which will be your main bass, the body of the track. So let's listen to the bass. Okay, now what's making the sound, first of all? Let's, let's, let's listen to it. Okay, as we can hear, very subby. Um, the sound for the bass is a sample. So next up, we've got the sidechain compressor being triggered by the sidechain track at the top. As you can see, audio from SC. The settings. Um, Ratio is at two, could potentially be higher really. And attack, um, I would normally do a shorter attack for side chains, it's not too important. Um, next up we've got an auto filter, this is just for filtering the bass during the breaks. Um, next up we have a saturator, a bit warmer, this is just a standard setting you can find in your Ableton um, with the settings there. This is just, it adds a bit of distortion. Um, kind of creates a bit of analog sounding warm, uh, warmth to it just by creating a uh, bit of distortion, some more harmonics. We have another compressor. Why have we got two compressors? Okay, well this, this compressor is just taking, just taking the, again, just smoothing out the dynamic range. Um, clearly when I was making this I would have thought there was some reason to, to flatten out the sound a little bit. Um, as you can see it's doing quite a bit of work so let's turn it off yeah there is quite a lot of range in there now when I say range I mean some sounds are coming loud and some sounds aren't um, it's not necessarily what you want you kind of want the whole bass to to really have a kind of level sound to it um, not always but in this case I did so I've got that there next up we've got an EQ and this EQ, you can't really see what it's doing here, but it's just rolling off the super low frequencies. Um, this is because they're unnecessary, and but if uh, you're not actually going to hear these, our ears pretty much stop hearing bass below about 20 hertz. So um, if you roll off the, the unneeded sound, it doesn't cause you any problems because whilst we can't hear it, all your kit, so for example, uh, when the track gets mastered or anything like that, these bits of kit can hear it. And if there's stuff going on in the, in the ranges that you can hear, and they're maybe say in a limiter or something is reacting to this this audio material, um, 
it's, could be, it's just doing stuff that's completely unnecessary. Just concentrate on stuff you can hear. So it's advisable to roll off anything really below about 30 hertz. Master engineer possibly would do that as well, but I just do that as a matter of prudence, say. Okay, so this is our basic sub. With quite a long plug-in chain. Next up, what well, we've got bass trans. Now, what does that mean? This is the transient. The transient of a sound is the first, the first thing you hear. Um, so say, for example, a hat. A hat is a lot of the information of a hat's in the transient. Pretty much all of the information is in the in the transient. However, uh, the sounds of long attacks, such as maybe a violin or something like that, as, uh, there really is no transient because it's coming with a long attack. Now, as you can hear, that sub bass here doesn't have much of a doesn't have much of a transient to it at all. So for what I did, I thought I'd create my own, just to kind of give the the individual notes of the bass um, a little bit more kind of punch. So to define when the, the notes are changing, kind of give it a little bit more muscle. So what's making this sound? Right, we've got the V station. It's a cool little synth, very cheap, very old, but I still use it all the time. What we have here, as you can hear, it, just, it really just sounds like some toms, and what it is, it's just a sine wave with um, a very short decay, so it just sounds like a tom sound, and this is playing every single time at the start of each note, and what it's doing is it's defining the start of each note, and when you can, when you can play it in conjunction with the bass, it sounds much more defined. Again, um, this just plays whenever the bass is like they're playing, um, you just layer these things on top. So here's the transient, this little kind of tom sounding noise. Let's have a look at the plug-in chain we've got. We've got the side chain again, possibly a bit unnecessarily because it's such a, a small sound, um, but it's there anyway. Um, we've got the EQ, I'm doing that. Um, again, rolling off the, the unnecessary sound. We've got the, the same saturator as before, and we've got the same compressor before. Again, taking care of the, uh, the dynamic range. Uh, without it, makes it just the sounds a little bit more level. Probably not doing too much. Okay, next up, so far we've got the bass, the sub, and the trans. But again, very subby still. Um, like I said before, you kind of want a bit of mid in your in your in the basses. Okay, so what else is here now? All the bass mid here. Oh, it's very quiet. Um, can't really hear it at this volume, but what all, all I've done here, just duplicated the track, rolled off any of the the, the lower frequencies, so just you just have the, the mid of that bass sound. Now you could, so for example, every, every bass, certainly a sub bass, is going to have a filter on it already within the synth. However, if you just open the filter, it starts to sound quite harsh very quickly. Uh, especially the filters which don't have so many degrees of uh, fine tuning if you like um, maybe just a couple notches on the filter and your bass is going to sound very different however you, if you just want to boost the, the mid range of the track again you could possibly put an EQ over the bass and just boost like that I prefer to do it a different way just to simply add another instance of the bass with just the mid playing and use that and then I can adjust the volume of it within the mixer um, or you know, treat it with different sounds. So this this mid here, it's just that all the all the sub rolled off, and just the mid playing. Again, it's got um, the the glue compressor which has not been triggered. Sometimes, um, what, what has clearly happened here is um, when I've just duplicated the bass, I've actually just duplicated the plugins as well with it. So this glue compressor is really when you can see that game uh, meter not moving, it means it's not being activated. So it's completely pointless. Let's get rid of that. Uh, the chorus, this is to give it width. Um, uh, you don't not necessarily always want width with your bass. This, this sound of bass, I wanted some width. Uh, next one is basically just the bass mid, but without the chorus, I imagine. Um, so without the width, yeah. As you can see, there's a gain here. Um, when you're rolling off, really, the main body of the bass, which is like what's happening here, um, you're not going to be left with much, and therefore the sound's going to be severely quiet. So I've actually boosted this by 17 decibels, uh, which is quite a bit. But we can hear it. So we can hear. It's a 
kind of mid rangey it's got it almost sounds like a, if you turn that far up it would sound quite like a sawtooth um, but I didn't want a sawtooth bass just wanted a kind of nice warm um, subby bass um, but the sawtooth is there just to kind of fill that mid up so if we play them all at the same time that sawtooth will disappear however you will have some mid-range content within the bass so if we listen to it now we can hear we can hear our transients we can hear our mid and we can also hear the sub so that's all we've got time for for now if you want to see some more get the latest issue of computer music <laughs>